On August 2nd, 1876, James Butler Hickok, known to the world as Wild Bill, was shot and killed. Over the next few weeks, the news would spread. Articles popped up in local newspapers, alerting everyone that one of the most famous gunfighters of the West was no more. The following are a few of those articles. They are written with bias, exaggeration, and mistakes, but are how people learned what happened to one of the biggest characters of the West in a small saloon in Deadwood. From the Lead Daily Call, Lead, South Dakota, August 10th, 1876. Hickok's assassin acquitted, Wild Bill is buried. On Tuesday, Wild Bill Hickok was buried by citizens of Deadwood, who although they had known him but a few days, were shocked and grieved by his brutal assassination by Jack McCall, the cowardly killer who was set free by a drunken and irresponsible group of men assembled as a jury for his trial. Probably Hickok was the only man we have yet had in our midst who had the courage and other qualifications to bring some semblance of order to the lawless element of our camp. The fact that he was killed by one of the sorriest specimens of humanity to be found in the hills is significant. This editor feels that the true reason for this cowardly killing is to be found in that fact. The facts of the killing are as follows. Hickok was in the saloon number 10, engaged in a poker game with three other men. For some unexplained reason, he was not sitting with his back to a wall. This has been his rule for many years, since his career of law enforcement had developed a long list of men who swore they would shoot him at the first opportunity. After they had been playing for some time, among the men in the saloon, Jack McCall appeared and approached the table from a point behind Hickok. No one paid any attention to him, and when he was directly behind Hickok's chair, McCall drew his gun and shot Hickok in the back of the head. In the confusion which followed, he made his escape out the front door and down our main street, disappearing in the backs of the store buildings across the street. He was found a short time later, and the trial immediately originated with the disgraceful ending which we have noted. From the St. Louis Globe Democrat, St. Louis, Missouri, August 20th, 1876. Wild Bill. The daring deeds of the murdered scout. His duel in the public square at Springfield. His fight with the Montana gang on Walnut Creek. Interesting incidents connected with his wild life, death, and burial. The tragic fate of James B. Hickok, better known as Wild Bill, a title given him by Texans during the war, has been already published. The noted scout has been murdered in the most cowardly manner by Jack McCall, who was subsequently acquitted after a mock trial by the miners of Deadwood. Hickok was a native of Illinois, his mother and sisters residing near Galena in that state. It was customary for him to visit his relatives every two or three years, and he never did so without bringing something substantial with him. His brother is a wagon boss in New Mexico, and strange to say, his brother's name is Bill. Wild Bill was generous to a fault, swore like a trooper at certain stages, and would rather indulge in poker than eat. On one occasion, having played in his last earthly possession, a black and tan terrier. Poor Bill, it is too bad to think of him being shot down without a show, remarked Mr. John Malone to a Globe Democrat reporter yesterday. The article now goes on to describe some of Hickok's gunfights and accomplishments, but for the sake of this video, we will skip that and focus on his death and burial. How he died. The most connected account of the murder yet published is that furnished the Louisville Courier Journal by its Deadwood correspondent, who says, the next event of importance that occurred during the week was the killing of Wild Bill, James Hickok, by one Jack McCall. In the early part of last spring, about the 1st of March, the Buffalo Bill troop were performing in Louisville. The principal actors were Buffalo Bill, Texas Jack, and Wild Bill. The latter person's true name was James Hickok. Wild Bill, as he was called by his acquaintances, had the reputation of being the best pistol shot in the West, and gloried in having killed 36 men. Jack McCall is about 25 years of age, 
and claims to have been born in Jefferson County, Kentucky, near Jefferson Town, but has been for the last eight or ten years living out in the far west, hunting buffaloes, trapping, fighting Indians, etc. Jack says that in 1869, Wild Bill killed his brother in Kansas without cause or provocation. Jack's statement is that his brother and Wild Bill had a little misunderstanding in a saloon in Kansas about some trivial matter, and Wild Bill proposed to fight it out. McCall said it was no fighting matter and did not want to fight, and that he was not armed when Wild Bill, having two pistols, threw McCall one of them and said, Damn you, defend yourself. McCall took the pistol, but before he could raise it, Wild Bill shot him dead. Young Jack McCall, hearing the particulars of his brother's death, registered an oath that he would kill Wild Bill on sight, and faithfully has kept his word. The circumstances attending the tragic event, as proven on trial, were that Wild Bill was seated in a gambling saloon playing cards when Jack McCall entered and walked up to Wild Bill and put a pistol to his head and blew his brains out. The pistol ball passing through Wild Bill's head, killing him instantly, and then striking Captain Massey, a Missouri River pilot who was seated at the table, in the arm, breaking the bone. Jack, after doing the killing, ordered the barkeeper and gamblers present to march out of the house in front of him, which they promptly did, he not caring to have any shots fired at him from the rear. Jack, after gaining the street, stood the crowd off for a few minutes, but finally was persuaded to give himself up for trial. Concerning the Funeral The correspondent of the Chicago Inter-Ocean writes as follows. After the inquest, the body of the deceased was placed upon a litter made of two poles and some boards, when a procession was formed, and the remains were carried to Charlie Utter's camp across the creek. Charles Utter, better known as Colorado Charlie, had been the intimate friend of the deceased for 15 years and, with that liberality which is a feature among mountaineers, had always shared his purse with him. Charlie was much affected by the death of his friend and incensed at the villain who had murdered him. A teepee was pitched at the foot of one of the giant trees which rise so majestically above Charlie's camp. Preparations were at once made for the funeral. The following notice was printed and sent out. Funeral notice died in Deadwood, Black Hills, August 2nd, 1876, from the effects of a pistol shot, J.B. Hickok, Wild Bill, formerly of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Funeral services will be held at Charlie Utter's camp on Thursday afternoon, August 3rd, 1876, at 3 o'clock. All are respectfully invited to attend. At the time appointed, a number of people gathered at the camp. Charlie Utter had gone to a great deal of expense to make the funeral as fine as could be had in this country. Under the teepee, in a handsome coffin, covered with black cloth and richly mounted with silver ornaments, lay Wild Bill, a picture of perfect repose. His long chestnut hair, evenly parted over his marble brow, hung in waving ringlets over the broad shoulders. His face was cleanly shaved, excepting the drooping mustache, which shaded a mouth which in death almost seemed to smile, but which in life was unusually grave. The arms were folded over the stilled breast, which enclosed a heart which had beat with regular pulsation amid the most startling scenes of blood and violence. The corpse was clad in complete dress suit of black broadcloth, new underclothing and white linen shirt. Beside him in the coffin lay his trusty rifle, which the deceased prized above all other things, and which was to be buried with him in compliance with an often expressed desire. A clergyman read an impressive funeral service, which was attentively listened to by the audience after which the coffin lid hid the well-known face of Wild Bill from the prying gaze of the world forever. Scenes at the Grave A grave had been prepared on the mountainside toward the east, and to that place in the bright sunlight, the air redolent with the perfume of sweet flowers, the birds sweetly singing and all nature smiling, the solemn cortege wended its way and deposited the mortal remains of Wild Bill. Upon a large stump at the head of the grave, the following inscription is deeply cut. A brave man, the victim of an assassin, 
J.B. Hickok, Wild Bill, aged 48 years, murdered by Jack McCall, August 2nd, 1876. The newspaper, however, had gotten his age wrong. In fact, he was 39 years old when he died. The Mylan Exchange, August 24th, 1876, Mylan, Gibson County, Tennessee. Wild Bill, his adventurous life and tragic death. Says the Kansas City Times, last evening's telegrams brought confirmatory reports of the death of William Hickok, a well-known frontier character. It appears that Bill died in just the way and manner he did not wish to die, that is, with his boots on. His life during the past five or six years has been one of constant watchfulness and expectation, as more than one reckless frontiersman has coolly contracted to take his life. But Bill was never off guard, and woe unto the wretched devil who failed to get the drop on the long-haired William. More than one fool has had a bullet sent crushing through his brains from the ever-ready pistol of this cool and silent desperado. William spent many months in the city after he left Hayes City, where he spent a season with the lamented General Custer. But on account of a deadly feud between himself and the friends of a Texan he had killed in Abilene some years before, he ever after kept out of the way of the Texas roughs who had sworn to take his life. While in Kansas City, he had made his headquarters about the saloons on Main Street, between 4th and Missouri Avenue. But becoming obnoxious to the police, and having no visible means of support, he was arrested by Marshall Spears as a vagrant. He left here and went to Clinton and Springfield, Missouri, where he met with some trouble, got away with his life, but was reported killed in the city papers. He wore his hair long, allowing it to hang in curls down upon his shoulders. He was tall, good-looking, and every inch the frontier hero as painted by the yellowback novelists. This fact led to his engagement by Ned Buntline to play in some of his sensational melodramas with Bill Cody, Buffalo Bill, J.W. Crawford, Captain Jack, and Texas Jack. Hickok made a little money playing scout upon the stage, and last fall turned up in Cheyenne, where he became a regular nightly ornament at McDaniel's and other fast dives about town. Again, he was notified by the city authorities to leave town, but by the intervention of friends, he was permitted to stay. It was while Bill was the hardest up and the world was frowning its coldest upon him that his brightest streak of luck came on. It was in the coldest, blustering days of last March when Mrs. Lake, the wife of the well-known circus man, came on from California and on the day of her arrival made William her husband. It was a pure love scrape on her part. She had fallen in love with Bill years before and had corresponded with him ever since the death of her husband, who was killed in southwest Missouri about four years ago. But domestic life did not suit such a rover as Wild Bill. Notwithstanding, Mrs. Lake lavished all her available funds upon her handsome husband, he was not content. He went east to raise a Black Hills expedition, but did not succeed very well. Late in the spring, he started for the new mining regions in the Deadwood district of the Black Hills. This proved to be his last journey, on the second of this month, he met with one of the men who had sworn a life vendetta against him and was shot in the head and killed instantly. It is reported that the name of the man who killed him is Sutherland and that he is the brother of a man killed by him in Abilene some years ago while he was marshal of that then turbulent town. William Hickok was a quiet, courteous gentleman when sober and seldom allowed himself to drink to excess. He dressed well, carried a small fancy cane in his hand, and rather avoided than sought company. While he was a frontiersman in every sense of the word, he was not an Indian scout. He was well known in nearly every frontier town and seldom went out on the trail. General Custer speaks well of him in his three years on the plains. He has many warm friends in this city, as well as all over the West, who will regret to hear of his tragic end, the end he has so long been expecting. From the Bozeman Avant Courier, September 1st, 1876, Bozeman, Montana. Something about Wild Bill. Wild Bill, J.B. Hickok, who was murdered on the 2nd at Deadwood by Bill Sutherland, was one of those characters developed by the onward strides of the Iron Horse 
when the Great American Desert was spanned by the Pacific Railways. Seven or eight years ago, his name was prominent in the scareheads of the border press, and if we could believe the half of what was written concerning his daring deeds, he must certainly have been one of the bravest and most unscrupulous characters of those lawless times. Contact with the man, however, dispelled all these illusions, and of late years, Wild Bill seems to have been a very tame and worthless loafer and bummer. Our city marshal ordered him out of town by virtue of the provisions of the Vagrant Act, only a few months ago. But Bill cordially invited the officer to a much warmer clime than this, and expressed the intention of staying as long as he pleased. Bill delighted in joining a crowd of tender feet at the bar, and soaking himself with whiskey at their expense, while he stuffed them in return with Munchausenish tales of his thrilling adventures and hairbreadth escapes from red fiends and white desperados. In such moments, he was the very personification of happiness. He enjoyed the fullest opportunity for the gratification of this great weakness during the grand rush to the Black Hills last spring. Although he had never been farther north than Fort Laramie, he could spin the most astounding yarns concerning the fabulous riches of the hills. His favorite one being how he, with a small party, had discovered a large cave near Custer City, which was full of diamonds and other precious stones, as well as tons upon tons of gold and silver. Years ago, before wine and women had ruined his constitution and impaired his faculties, he was more worthy of the fame which he attained on the border. An instance in point, which shows the presence of mind and ready with of the man as well as his utter recklessness, is told by one eyewitness. Bill was standing at the bar of a saloon in one of the mushroom towns of the frontier one evening when a man with whom he had quarreled the night before walked up behind him and placed the muzzle of a revolver against his temple. Bill turned and saw at once that the fellow meant business. Say your prayers, said the ruffian, and Sam damned quick too. Oh, said Bill, I guess you won't shoot me. That man behind you has his finger on the trigger and will shoot you before you shoot me. The man turned to see who was behind him, but before he could take in the situation, Bill had pulled his own weapon, and a bullet went crashing through the brain of the would-be assassin. Bill's happy ruse had saved his life, and the next morning the other man slept in an unmarked grave. Hickok, like all his victims, died with his boots on, and the world has not suffered anything like an irreparable loss. As you can see, the opinions of different newspaper writers varied quite a bit when talking about Wild Bill. Some of them loved him, thought him a hero, and others thought he was a desperado, a ruffian, and a vagrant. But no matter how people might have thought of Wild Bill Hickok, there is no doubt of the great mark he left upon the Wild West.